Hello, fellow Java developers, welcome to the starter course on Apache Camel. In today's video, we will take a look at the Apache Camel's architecture. Let's begin. At this diagram, we can see all major Camel architecture components. A main component is Camel context, which holds all Camel related entities. These entities are routes which, as we know from previous video, a definitions of data flows between systems, components, which allow Camel to communicate with various software by various protocols, and points, which are message channels, through which messages are sent and received, processors, which modify messages and execute any user-defined logic, registry, which serves as a storage, for many camel related entities and many other components in this video we will discuss camel context routes components endpoints and processors as these are the most important parts of camel's architecture the other entities that are held within camel context such as registry type converters languages will be discussed in future videos Let's start our overview with Camel context, as it is the most important part of Apache Camel framework. Camel context is a runtime which makes all these entities work together. Most importantly, it runs our routes, which means that without Camel context, our integrations will not start. To be ready for running Camel, we need to know Camel context lifecycle. Here is a simplified diagram showing the context lifecycle. Be aware that in many programs using Apache Camel, context lifecycle might be a bit more complex. But the steps shown here are always present in any Apache Camel program. So on to the lifecycle. First, Camel context is created. Here you can see default Camel context. It is used when we have a standalone Camel application without Spring Framework. Then, all necessary entities like routes are added to the context. Then, context is started and all routes that were added at configuration step start working, receiving and sending messages. When we don't want to run our integrations or routes anymore, we stop the context and all routes stop working. Finally, we should close the context. By the way, Camel context implements auto-closable interface, which means that we can use try with resources to close it automatically. For now, this is all we need to know about Camel context. We will look at it in details later, but just remember that Camel context is a runtime that makes Camel work and that it should be created, configured, started, stopped, and then closed. Now let's take a look at Camel routes. As we already know, Camel routes are definitions of our integrations. They specify how data is transferred from one system to another. We write Camel routes using Camel's domain specific languages or DSLs. For now, there are three DSLs available, Java DSL, XML DSL or YAML DSL. Here you can see exactly the same Camel route written in these three languages. Each Camel route is a series of steps that will be executed with our data. Each Camel route starts with from DSL element. This DSL element specifies a source or input for our route. For example, here we can see from file, which means that the input for this route will be some file located in the specified directory. In the example from previous video, we've specified from GMS Q, which means that the input for this route will be statement request GMS Q. But how do we know what can be written here in this from statement? Technically, you can pass any string here, but not any string will work. For example, if I write something like my custom component here, 
it will not work. Only those strings that have camel component associated with them can work. We will learn more about components and how to write from statements later in this video. After the from statement, one or more processing steps follow. These steps are DSL elements that do something with our message or execute some logic. For example, here you can see log and transform processing steps. As you can guess, log processing step displays the message and transform processing step changes the message content. We will learn more about this and many other processing steps in later videos. Last processing step in this route is to DSL element which sends the message to some destination. In our case, this destination is a file system directory. As with from statement, we should use a string that has corresponding camel component to be able to send our message to the specified destination. Apart from input specification and processing steps, each camel route has its own ID. We can specify it in route ID DSL element or if we don't do it, camel will generate one for us. For now, this is all you need to know about camel routes. Try to remember that routes are defined in Java, XML or YAML DSL, that they live inside camel context and that each route consists of from input element and multiple processing steps. In our future videos, we will look at camel routes in more details and will learn to build them. But for now, let's continue our overview of camel architecture. And the next architecture elements are message and exchange. As you already heard, camel works with messages as they flow through camel routes. Messages are data records that are used by different systems to communicate with each other. Camel message is an abstraction that can represent something like GMS or Kafka message, HTTP request or file in a file system. It consists of these parts. Let's take a look at them. Body is a payload of the message. It can be of any type and length and it has a type of Java lang object. Next, headers message part. It represents an additional information attached to the message. It has a type of Java util map of strings which represent headers names against objects which represent headers values. This means that each camel header has a unique name of type string and can have any value. Next, message ID message part is a message identifier. Usually camel generates this message ID by itself, but some components provide their own message IDs. For example, GMS component fills this message ID with GMS ID of incoming message. Lastly, camel message may or may not have a timestamp associated with it. Similar to message ID, some camel components can provide a timestamp. For example, Kafka and GMS components fill this timestamp on event or message received. But unlike message ID, this timestamp is not generated by camel automatically. It must be provided by a component. We will learn how to work with camel messages in our following videos. But for now, you need to know that camel messages flow through camel routes and that they consist of message ID, headers, body, and optionally a timestamp. But messages do not flow through camel routes by themselves. They are contained within camel exchanges. In Apache camel, exchanges represent request and optionally a response message or an exception that happened during processing of the request. In earlier versions of camel, this was very important for communicating in request reply or event message patterns, but for now it is mostly simplified. When just beginning working with camel, you can think of exchange as of container for message and some metadata that is flowing through camel route. You can get stored message 
this get message method. We will discuss in and out messages in later videos when we touch on GMS component and request reply communications. But for now, let's take a look at metadata that Camel Exchange contains. Exchange ID is a unique identifier of an exchange generated by Camel itself. Exception is Java exception that might be thrown during a flow of Camel route. Pattern is a flag that indicates if this exchange is used for request reply or event messaging pattern. Properties and variables are maps containing different metadata, similar to headers in message. And exchange clock is a Java object that might be used to obtain a timestamp of exchange creation. So for now, you should remember that Camel Exchange is a container for Camel message that flows through Camel routes, and that Exchange can also contain various metadata. Next element in Camel architecture is Camel component. Components are connectors that allow Camel to communicate with external systems. They provide connectivity to many different protocols or software elements, such as Kafka, GMS, HTTP, Salesforce, and many others. Components are what we use in our Camel routes from and to statements in order for them to work. Remember how we talked about how we should know what to specify in these strings. For example, how do we know that we need to write file, then colon, and then the directory? There is only one place to get this information. Official Camel documentation. Here on this page, you can find the list of all available components. There is more than 300 of them. Link to this page will be in description below. So, we need to read the file. So naturally, we will go to file component description. And first thing that we can see here is exactly the string that we were using in our camel route. File, then colon, and then directory name. Now we know that in order for our camel routes to work, we need to know what component we want to use and look up its URI format in documentation. For now, there isn't much more to it. Of course, components can be altered, they have many different settings, and you can even create your own components, but this will be topics for later. For now, just remember that components are connectors, and that we can find a description of any component on this documentation page. Next elements we'll take a look at are camel endpoints. Camel endpoints are an abstraction over message channel integration pattern. Each camel endpoint represents such channel through which different systems can exchange messages. In our example route, we have two endpoints. From file endpoint that reads files from specified directory and to file endpoint that writes file to another directory. From endpoint is called a consumer because it reads or consumes messages, in our case files, as they arrive. To endpoint is called a producer, because it writes or produces messages to the specified destination. Different endpoints can represent different things. For example, HTTP consumer endpoint would act as a HTTP server, as it will read incoming HTTP messages. HTTP producer endpoint would act as a HTTP client as it will send HTTP messages to the specified URL. GMS consumer endpoint will read GMS messages from queue or a topic as they arrive. GMS producer endpoint will write or publish GMS messages to queue or a topic. Now let's take a look at how endpoints are created. In Camel's internals, endpoints are produced by components, or in other words, components act as factories for endpoints. Let's take a look at our example route again. What actually happens internally in this from statement is that Camel sees this file part of the string 
So it goes to file component and asks for an object that will read files from the specified directory. This object is our consumer. And the same happens in our to statement. Camel sees this file part goes to file component, except this time it asks for an object that will write files to the specified directory. And that's how we get our producer file endpoint. So what you should remember is that camel endpoints represent message channels and it is the endpoints who actually read and write messages and components are used only to produce these endpoints. The last camel's architecture element we'll take a look at in this video is a processor. Processors are used to perform custom logic in camel's routes. For example, transform message body, log message contents, or add or modify headers. Camel provides many built-in processors. For example, log processor for logging, transform processor for changing message body, and many others. Additionally, you can implement your own processors very easily. For example, you can use Lambda that accepts Exchange and does any custom logic that you need, or by implementing processor interface, which has only one method process, and using this implementation in our camel route like that. So, as you might have guessed, we usually use processors to execute our business logic. So, to sum things up, we've explored the most important components of camel architecture. Camel context, which orchestrates everything. Camel routes, that define how our data flows from one system to another. Messages and exchanges, which represent data records and its containers. Components and endpoints, which connect camel to external systems. And processors which modify messages and handle business logic. In the next video, we will use these elements to get a hands-on experience with Camel and build our first Camel route. And with that, here's the end of our overview of Camel architecture. Be sure to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon. And if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. I will answer to all of those. See you in the next video. Until then, happy coding!